Hi and welcome to another video looking at this uh, build of a Tally Lynn locomotive um, in 009 basically by badly butchering a Backman uh, Thomas & Friends Skylowey model. Um, last time I got a bit of basic paint colour on uh, but nothing else. Uh, well a little bit of black wash to darken the colour but not, not much else. Um, today we're almost at the point of being able to fully reassemble this. Um, pretty much everything's painted um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through exactly what we've done. So first thing I've done is I re-soldered on the wire. If you remember last time I pointed out that one of the wires had come loose from the soldering the circuit board again. Um, so I've re-soldered that back on and used the um, OmniFixer um, again to, to hold everything. Um, I'll try and put a photo up. Uh, made life really easy holding the circuit board, holding the wire. Really, really useful tool. If you've not seen my uh, review of that yet, uh, I'll put a link in the in the description. Um, but once that was soldered back up and I checked that everything was working, um, I've put the cylinders back on as well. Um, so they just slot back in. So these are the aftermarket replacements. Um, they're the Narrow Planet kit. Um, so that kit had um, uh, replacement slide bars, uh, crosshead um, piston, and cylinders. Um, so that's all all in place. Um, all works works nicely. Um, and so once I got once I got the circuit board soldered back on, I tested it. But then I also tested it with the with the cylinders on, and it runs nicely. I'll try and put a video here somewhere uh, as we talk about it. But it shuffled up and down my my test track quite nicely. So I'm quite happy that that's that that's done. Um, I've gone back in and redone this black paint. I wasn't happy with it. I, I said last time I'd, I'd added some black primer to the edges. Um, to try and um, get rid of some of the shiny effect. It, it looked a bit streaky and I wasn't convinced by it. It wasn't looking very black. So what I've done is I've gone back in and I've actually used this. So this is this black 2.0 uh, by Stuart Semple. It's meant to be like the blackest of black paints. Um, and it really does. As long as you don't, obviously if you put a, a varnish over the top then it defeats the, the purpose. But otherwise it gives a really, really dark black uh, matte finish. Uh, it's not cheap but the, the bottle goes a long way when I'm modelling. Um, so I use it for kind of painting, um, essentially painting holes that aren't holes so where you want to suggest there's a hole but it's just to kind of an inset um, on a model. This is really good for that because you can make it look really really dark as if there is really a, a hole. Um, so yes yeah, so that's, a, that's a useful tip. Um, I'll give a link uh, in the description. I don't know if he still makes this exact version but he makes other black as black paints um so yeah i'll stick a I'll stick a link in the instruction in the description uh but then other things so i went in and i started attacking this with some um other weathering stuff so it's a bit difficult to see on the camera but hopefully you can see it's now got rust uh streaks all over i actually had a problem with this i used this uh, MIG rust effects. I've had this for years um, and it's a kind of spirit based thing and it's, it's separated but when I mixed it it seemed okay but it, it didn't dry for ages and I thought I'd kind of really badly screwed up um, but um, yeah it's all it's all drying it now it looks really good close up it looks really really good but I've also been in and added some of the the detail parts back in so you can see I've got uh, pipe work here um, I've got the grab rail here so they can get up to the, the, the tank filler. Um, I've got the um, handrail at the front, um, spectacle uh, window surrounds so they're the turned brass ones I made, uh, grab rails down the side of the cab are all in. Um, they're a bit loose at the moment they're in tiny little holes and they don't glue very well but they go into holes in the in the in this piece uh, so hopefully once it's all assembled on the local it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too bad but that's all that's all done. Um, the windows need glazing but I can't do that uh, until I'm definitely certain I don't want to put any more varnish on because obviously um, it fogs up the up the glass. Uh, I tend to use the micro crystal clear glue for doing the glazing, certainly small ones like this rather than trying to cut plastic to the right size and it goes all foggy if you, um, if you spray it so I don't want to do that quite yet. So that'll probably be like the last thing I do will be the windows. Um, so yeah so that's the the local body um, pretty much done. Um, for the bits of the footplate that are left um, I've fitted the buffers so these again are the it'll focus. again these are the brass ones that I turned so they're meant to be kind of blocks of wood with a, a band round all painted uh, black. Um, I've also added a coupling hook. 
There was hooks on the original um, Batman model. Um, I seem to have lost one of them. And the other one's a bit kind of, it's a bit, it's not great hook looking. So I've just made these by basically bending up a bit of um, a bit of wire and then filing a bit off each side of the round wire to make it flat. Uh, and that seems to have worked. So I've done that on the front, on the front and on the the back. This back piece is getting quite fragile, so I'm hoping once it's in, it will hold itself together. Uh, but you can see buffers and a coupling hook. So that's all. That's all nicely done. Um, so yeah, so it really is just a question of, of reassembling this thing now, um, and then once it's reassembled, I will add a few bits of uh, weathering powders. Just I like the texture that it adds, the kind of um, the dry and slightly bumpy texture on top of the paint uh, and on top of the the last um, varnish layer. Uh, so this had some testers dull coat, uh, which I still have some of, um, as the as the kind of the the sealing lacquer. Uh, does it down nicely, uh, but I, I find picking out bits with the with the weathering powders after that layer uh, works nicely. So that'll be the be the last thing. But literally, yeah, um, this just needs reassembling now, um, and, and that and that final weathering pass. Um, so I think this will be the the last kind of build uh, video, and the next one will be this the 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 final kind of um, wrap up video where we have a look at the the finished model. Um, so yeah, so thanks for. Thanks for following along. Um, as I say, it's not been as, as detailed um, this series due to the fact that I was already kind of part way through the process before I started um, doing the videos, but hopefully um, people have enjoyed it. And as I say, once I've finished butchering this Backman model, um, I also have um, a, a Reneas model to, to butcher at some point in the future. Um, so there'll probably be some more uh, Thomas and Friends related uh, videos in the future. Um, but yeah, for now, watch out for the, for the final um, finished video uh, for this locomotive uh, hopefully not too not too far away now so apologize apologies for the slightly uh, wobbly handheld footage I, I put my tripod away for the day but um yeah um it's gonna be a while before the next video um things didn't quite go to plan um i thought i'd have a quick assembly and as you can see i've managed to split the foot plate part in two um it's snapped right in the middle where the coupling block, uh, sorry, the coupling hook uh, goes. Um, so that that was slightly unfortunate. Um, uh, easy enough to super glue it back together and hide the hide the join. Uh, not too not too worried about that. Uh, but the major problem is this is the the chassis obviously motor out. You have to take the motor out really to get the foot plate on without kind of um, having to flex it open, uh, which is probably how I weakened it on a previous occasion. Uh, but there's only one wire attached. The other ones come off. Um, I did try and solder it back on, uh, but when I put the motor back in, um, nothing really moved. It seemed to start to spin and then locked up, and then there was a flash of blue smoke uh, from here, where it looks like it had shorted against the chassis. This this piece of masking tape I put on um, when I was trying to reassemble and work out what I was doing, but essentially the, the motor goes in here, um, and you can see here that solder joint is very close to the chassis, and I assume that something shorted. Um, and it literally just burnt the wire off the motor again. Um, I've tested the motor um, with just uh, track power straight to it and it's fine. Um, given that this isn't stepping the voltage down, I think I'm just going to, and the amount of trouble it's caused me, I think I'm just going to cut it off. Um, have the pickups wired direct to the motor, a lot, le lot less joints to worry about, a lot less wires to catch, uh, and hopefully it'll all go back together again. But yeah, given, <laughs> given the state of the pile of pieces, um, yeah, it's going to take me a little longer than planned to put back together. So don't hold your breath for the next video on this one. Um, depending on how demoralised I get when trying to resolder this, uh, I might switch to the having a look at the G-Series Simplex again. But uh, yeah, for now, grrr, it's not what I wanted.